Hello and welcome to Beginning, Middle, End, the podcast where we talk to creators and story lovers about storytelling. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. A picture can change the course of war. They can shift cultural sentiment, as did the abuse photos from Abu Ghraib. A single image can break your heart or make you fall in love. I'm Shane, and stories are my favorite things in the world. Here to talk about it with me today is Kareem Shamsi Basha. Hello. Kareem is a writer and photographer who immigrated to the United States from Damascus, Syria at the age of 18. His work has appeared in National Geographic, Traveler, Sports Illustrated, People, Time, Newsweek, The New York Times, The Washington Post, just to name a few. He's been on assignments all over the world. He's an author and a blogger. He's written several books, including the Caldecott Honored Children's book titled The Catman of Aleppo. You've got fiction novels, photo essays, books about religion, You've started magazines, been a teacher, you hold a degree in mechanical engineering. You're a modern day Renaissance man. Welcome, Kareem. (laughs) I don't know about Renaissance. Don't even ask me about that engineering degree. (laughs) So let's talk about story. Yeah. You've been a storyteller in many different media. What makes a good story? Uh, Humans exist on four levels. Uh, Emotions, physical, the mental, intellectual, and then the spiritual. What makes a good story in words is if you can hit on those throughout the, the, the story, you know, on, on, on all levels of, of being, on all level of uh, humanity. What tells a story in a, in a picture, it becomes a really much more difficult uh, situation where you have to capture those levels in one single moment. And that's near impossible. If you can get two of them, you're doing great. Uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson, a a famed French photographer, uh, he coined the term the decisive moment when all those elements come together. If, If you do have a picture that communicates on those four levels, you have a storytelling picture. So how do you tell a story with a single image? What's your, your particular approach? My, my approach is um, telling, telling a story just like with words. You, you want to explain what's going on. You want to, if it depends on what you're trying to take a picture of. So assume you're taking a picture of uh, a mom and child walking on the beach, for example. You want to show them, you want to show the environment, you want to show uh, at the same time that you're dealing with those four levels of emotions and intellect and spirit uh, and body, you're also dealing with light, composition, emotions and the moment. You have those four things going on. And uh, you want the light to be perfect, uh, that enhancing your subject not detracting from it. You want the composition to be optimal. And that's a whole wild, wide world just to dive into right there. You want the emotion of the subject. You want the picture to elicit emotions in the viewer when they look at it. And then you want to capture the image at the decisive moment, at the time when um, when those four elements are all there. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so speaking about capturing the decisive moment, I know in photography there's all the kinds of tricks to composition, rule of thirds, symmetry, repetition, golden ratio. As a photojournalist, um, I imagine a lot of it is reactive. How much... How much is composition at that point instinctual or trained versus in the moment decision making? How do you compose on the fly? What uh, what kind of things are you looking for? Is it is it a lot of luck? Is it training? What are your secrets? Uh, there's no luck whatsoever. It's um, you have to train for so long before the mechanics of the image become second nature. Uh, when I say mechanics, I'm talking f stops, shutter speeds, light, composition. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you walk in a room or you go in a, you, you're outside somewhere and you look at a subject and you have seconds to capture the image that tells your story. There's about a hundred factors that have to conflux into the right place for you to take that 
picture. So you can't be worrying about what f-stop you should use, or what shutter speed you should use, or what depth of field you should use, or what lens you should use, or what film speed you should use, or what film you should use, or what, um, this is film days, but same thing with digital. Um, all the mechanics have to become so second nature that it's on the fly and when, within a microsecond you can adjust all your elements and you're ready now to capture the decisive moment. You're ready to worry about the composition and the emotions that the picture elicits and the, the feel that you're in hand, in it, you're eliciting in the viewer when they look at this picture. So you have two big things, mechanics and creative. They're about a 50-50 game. The 50 of the mechanics have to be, you, can, you have to be able to do it in your sleep, basically, in microseconds before you can even come to the creative aspect of it. So it sounds like it's all, it's, it's more preparation than luck. Yeah, there's no luck. I, I would say there's zero luck. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some of the differences between uh, regular photography, which um, might be enhancing or idealizing reality versus photojournalism, whereas you're, you're trying to trying to capture the truth and the realism of something. Can you talk about some of those uh, differences in, in mindset when, you're, when you have to switch between photojournalism versus uh, standard photography? Yeah, photojournalism is interesting. You're basically um, running along words. You're, you're trying to, you know, whether you're doing it for a newspaper or for a magazine or for a website or for a whatever, your, your, your subject is to tell the story with the picture. Just like the words tell the story with words. So um, you want to investigate, you want to you wanna understand what's going on. You know, if, if you're covering a hurricane, like I've covered many hurricanes for magazines, you, you want to show the damage, you want to show all the effects of the hurricane, but you also want to show how those effects are impacting people. Because when you write a story, you want to write about the people impacted. So it's the same thing. You're just doing the same thing with images. And it's really, I find it more difficult because uh, you have to choose the right image. You have to capture the right image. And, you know, if you're, if you're covering a big news item, like a huge fire where people are trapped on the top floors, you know, you can't get carried away with, with, with the fire itself. How is it affecting those people? So, you know, it's stuff like that. You have to understand how the impact of, of the event is, is affecting the humans involved. Whereas in commercial photography or architecture photography or product photography or art photography, you have all the time in the world. You have control over the light. You have, you have a lot of control. In photojournalism, you have zero control. So you're an immigrant from Syria, living yes. in the deep south. <laughs> At the same time, your work has taken you all over the world to places of uh, you know, overt and covert conflict. <laughs> Arab Americans have not had the easiest time since 9-11. Talk about how these things have influenced your <laughs> storytelling. When I'm telling a story, when I'm on assignment for a magazine or for whoever, um, people draw conclusions about me just before I even open my mouth. Just when they see the name, I mean, it's obviously a foreign name. They're not sure where I'm from. But for those who know I'm Arab, we have, you have these certain prejudices. Uh, Arabs need a PR public relations uh, agency big time because yeah. we have a lot of great things and a lot of humanity. And all you see is terrorism and war. And, you know, that's just, that's just terrible. But um, there are things I, I do to, to overcome that, you know, and, and you get to know the people, you talk to them, you let them know you're just like them, you know. You're basically after food, water, roof over your head, and love and peace and a few other ideals. We all want the same things. So I kind of come from a, from a non, non, uh, non, oh, non overbearing approach, just kind of a humble approach. And I let them into my world instead of me going into their world. 
uh, in photojournalism, you meet 10 people a day, basically, you know, and you got to make friends with them within seconds. Otherwise, you're not going to get the picture. In your first generation, uh, your children, have you noticed any difference with the uh, second generation in, in terms of how they feel they fit in, their, their place in America, how other people respond to them? Is there a, has there been a difference or a change? Well, a little bit. Their, you know, their name, one of my blogs was my, sorry about your Arabic last name to my kids, <laughs> you know, um, because it will mark them, you know, regardless whether they want to or not, they're marked, they're Arabs. So people are going to draw conclusions immediately. Um, but it is a little bit easier. They've gone through some things in, in school where um, Demi's dad did that, you know, if a bombing is happening or whatever. I hear comments, they, they've heard comments, but they take it lightly that they're, they're, they're a lot like me, very proud of who they are and uh, the humans that they are. And, and they just come across as very intelligent and very aware of what's going on and uh, against all the ills and, and for all the good things. So getting back to photography, what is one of your favorite images that you've taken? Talk about the story that it tells and, and how you captured it. Uh, I photographed the birth of my three kids and my birth and my middle son, he's coming out his hands are like this and it's in black and white and it's so dramatic. There's a lot, there's a shot I took of um, Morgan Freeman that I love. Uh, it was for the cover of People magazine 20 years ago. But he's, <laughs> I said, look, look at my assistant, Amy Jo. And he said, okay. And I said, just look in her direction. He looks at Amy Jo and he goes, <laughs> and I, I took the picture and that didn't run, but I said, that's one of my favorite pictures. This Morgan Freeman going like this. You know, I, it, just telling the story, just telling his humanity. Uh, I, that, that, that's my purpose. You know, all, all of us are in search of a purpose, right? And my purpose is to show humanity everywhere, not just in Arabs and Muslims and whatever, but just to show humanity. I showed the humanity of Morgan Freeman. That almost ran on the cover of people, but it didn't. Yeah, I've seen the picture of your son, the black and white photo of him kind of screaming into life. When you're in a moment like that, how, how much of you is detached and thinking in terms of photography and capturing capturing a good image and how many how much of you is in the moment and watching the birth of your son yeah you can be in the photography if you are here doing commercial architecture portrait you know you're doing a controlled situation like i said earlier when that becomes second nature then you can move over to the storytelling to the that picture was shot like this. I wasn't even looking through the camera. And it was film dates. And it was you know, an FM2, a very, very mechanical camera, F-stop, shutter speed. That's all it has. <laughs> Nothing with a, F, with a non-auto focus, you know. And uh, I shot it. And I just said, I hope, I hope to God it's sharp. Uh, I, I have a story. Similar story about a, a Sports Illustrated assignment. I shot a Dale Earnhardt crashing into the wall of Talladega, but it's an incredible crash picture. And they came from turn four, and I spot Dale's cars turning. And by the time I grabbed my camera to my eye, they were right in front of me, and I went like this. You know, there's no time to think F stop, shut of speed, compass. There, it, the whole thing happened in less than a millisecond, like, like a fraction of a second. And the picture is incredible. So was there luck in there? No. Was my camera set? Was I lucky my camera set? No, I had my camera set. And I performed the picture. You know, I don't know, call it luck or call it preparation. I don't really believe in luck. I think it's the same thing. 
But that's one of my favorite pictures because it's a, it's a moment that happened in time and will never be repeated. And you captured it and it's forever. Well, that's a great segue to, uh, to my technology question because I also started in film photography shooting 24 exposures. You had to develop the film using a larger dark room. Then came digital. Then came cell phones, GoPros, drones. Uh, you can... You know, you've got a professional camera now where you can hold the button down and take 40 shots in a second uh, with no blackout. How are all these technology improvements changing photography? It's changing it at zero because you still have to see the picture. It doesn't matter what you're shooting with, phone or an FM2, like the, uh, I use for that picture of my, the birth of my son, or a speed graphic you still have to see it before you take the picture. I tell people, just because we have phones that take unbelievable pictures, that does not make everybody a photographer. Everybody might think they can now become a photographer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of, of the art of photography where it happens here, not in the cam. And it happens in the eye and in the brain and in the heart. And then the camera facilitates the taking of the picture. The facilitating has moved forward over the years. And now we can take incredible shots with our phones. But you still have to see it, you have to feel it. Okay, speaking of everyone thinking they can be a photographer, things like Instagram, you have an Instagram, it's Kareem-SB-Photography. But talk about our daily inundation with photography now, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, there's a constant stream of photos. Whereas in the past, photos were confined to a magazine, a billboard, photo albums, maybe the vacation slideshow that nobody wanted to see. But now we are constantly bombarded by images. Everyone's taking them. Everyone's posting them. How do you think social media is uh, affecting photography? You know, it's okay. I, I don't have a problem with it. And, and I, I think it's changing things to where people are more aware of of moments, perhaps, you know, I don't know if they understand it on that level or not, but everybody's taking pictures and posting them and, and that's okay, you know, just the, the the ease that that is going, taking place and it's definitely changed the market, you know, photographers aren't hired at the same rates because a lot of people can almost do an okay job, you know, so there's a lot of photographers out there with, with phones and and if a company wants to do their, their websites with the owner's phone they can and that's okay i i kind of like it. it it makes people more aware of of the difference between the art and and the hobby you know and and that photography is might be complicated and might be worth you know looking into photography itself instead of just a phone over the years, you've already done a lot of storytelling. I read the intro about all the books you've done, all the places you've been, all the publications you've worked for. What's an important story for you that you haven't yet told? Well, photography-wise, I photographed my children. When Zaid was four years old, I photographed him becoming a big brother when Dury was born. Then I photographed him and Dury, when Dimmy was born, becoming big brothers to her. That telling of my kids becoming siblings is probably the most important story that I've ever, ever photographed. And Life magazine back in the day almost ran. <laughs> but, but then they pulled it out because something else came in that was more relevant. Um, that would be the, the, the story that I would love to eventually publish somewhere. I need to put it on Instagram. Uh, it's on negatives, so I need to convert them and make prints and, and put them on Instagram. A lot of pictures that I took in Syria when I went back when my father passed away in 04, that shows my country as a vibrant, lovely, modern country, not desert and storms and ISIS and war, you know. Um, that's very important to me. Several others, too, a lot of, um, a lot of stories. 
Okay, so for my last question for you today, I'm going to ask you, what is your best piece of storytelling advice? I mean, basically look for the humanity. Look, look for the humanity, then tell the story of humanity in whatever you're doing. Whether you're shooting little flowers in the middle of grass, life, burgoning, you know. Just, just go beyond what's in front of you, what you see through the lens, and try to capture the essence of, of the story. And whether you do it with words or pictures, try to impact the viewer or the reader and try to change, not change, but perhaps try to impact them, try to better their view on life, try to make them feel like humanity is everywhere. That's what, what we did with the cat man of Aleppo, a guy in Aleppo, Syria, saving the cats during the war. I mean, how that's humanity reduced to its basic premise. Uh, just humanity is everywhere look for it and then convey it to people because we need more of it yeah well, that's great advice thanks so much for chatting with me today kareem we'll have you back to talk about your books and your journalism to learn more about kareem and his work visit www.kareembooks.com or visit his blog at arabinalabama.com you can also find him on instagram at kareem-sb-photography let us know in the comments if you have any questions for Kareem or any tips on creating stories with images. Thanks for having a conversation with me today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're still here? I didn't think you'd make it this far. Like, comment, subscribe.